Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back. We've got another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, bite-sized business advice. And we're going outside the lines today. We're talking about mind and body and self-care. we got a rock star guest. She's done too much to list, so it's all in the <laughs> bio in the description down below. Before we dive in, though, Michelle, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Brandon. I look, how, how could I not say no to Harmonious? Because you're talking all my vibe when we're talking about Harmonious. Yes, I love it. I love it. That's it. All right. I'm going to clip that. The show's over. That's all I need. This was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. I appreciate that. Yeah, we we want to build a Harmonious business here at, at What If. That's what we do. And there, you can't do that if you as the leader and your team are not at a peak performance level. So, uh, we could argue that probably all day. I know you're on my team, so we don't need to argue with each other, but we need to figure this out. How do we, as, as leaders, how do we take care of ourselves so we can show up? And how do we also promote our teams to take care of themselves so they can show up and it's all harmonious? So before we dive into all of that, which I know we're going to get to, can you give me your background a little bit and how you came into self-care and teaching your clients self-care specifically? So one of the, how I came into it, it was not nothing that just happened up. It was just like one day, like I'm tired. Why am I not performing like I could? Because one, like you said, if you as a leader, how can you lead when you're tired? How can you lead because you're frustrated? So how do I give on that for So the stress, that's what it is. As it says, stress does kill, but stress also does other things with your emotions, your body. So if I want to be the mind, body, soul connection, I have to have this whole person into gear. And, and for me to be effective as a leader, I need to show that forth to my team because you know what? Your team is following after you. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's so true. And you can't you just can't lead people if you're not in, in peak condition, both mentally, physically, because they see it and then it it does kind of shed off on them, if you will. So as a leader, I mean, you you said stress kills. I think it kills both a person and an organization because and the environment. You, yes. I, yeah, the environment too, the culture of the of the, the team. I mean, you have employees and that's both in, in person and virtually that is felt among whatever team you're a part of. So this is a super important conversation. And the other part of this is the decision fatigue that compounds with stress as leaders, we're making decisions all day long, some very important, some financial, some with people like we need to be in top mental condition to approach our workday. So I'm, I'm really excited to dive in here. So where do you where do you start with people when you're when you're kind of diagnosing where they're at and and how we tackle self care like what are kind of the first steps to get people into the rhythm of taking care of themselves? So again, as we had a conversation earlier, you you have to make that decision. You have to make that decision. Like, what am I going to do? Am I going to do this for me, or I'm going to just do this just to be getting out of something to do? I say to me as what I do mostly, I often ask the person, who are you doing this for? Or how effective do you want this to work? Now, are you just going to waste the time? Because there's, think about it. There's a whole lot of other people out here that needs the time <laughs> and put the time in doing something good for yourself, physically, mentally, and spiritually, you know, um, as you said, the energy was in your eye. I'll say out to the leaders and to your business owners today. How is the culture of your environment <laughs> in your workplace? We know that everybody has different decisions. We know that everybody has different makeups, different beings, but we all got to work that together. If we want to be effective as a team, 
right? So what I do is I learn the strategies of what am I, what kind of culture am I dealing with? Well, am I dealing with an extrovert over here? So how do I get them and join it into the party of doing this team building effort for stress? You know, because again, it could be stressful to them as coming in to come out of their shell. So how am I going to be affected? I got to look at everybody in the organization at their attitudes and how they how they move and adjust. Yeah, that's so okay. So that's interesting because then you're taking into account the the whole person, and it's not just like go meditate for five minutes at a time. How do you how do you start to break that down person by person? Like, are there different personality traits, or you said introvert, extrovert? Yeah. What, so what like? so basically, what I would do in in when I come to an organization. So like, for instance, I'll go to a senior senior home. Sometime I can go there and, you know, do the efforts of that. So what I would do is who has heard about these mechanisms? You know, yeah. some people that will start off the conversation. Oh, well, I've heard of who has who has heard of hand mudras for relaxation or for pain or whatever else. Who has heard about sound healing? Who has heard about the rain stick? And then you open that mind up. Well, I haven't heard of it. Then we go around and ask questions. And then we all, who wants to try? Who wants to volunteer? So most of the time, the person who's going to up jump and volunteer is somebody that you know that's on a good, on the powerful on your team. So those who are less than four, you ask them, ask them the question, would you like to help me? Let's try this, you know, you know, get them involved. That's awesome. Yeah, I love that. Make them, make them get involved, make them take ownership of it. That's best way to get your team involved in anything, whether it's self-care or business building principles. Fantastic. So how can I, as a leader, let's say I want to bring this, this stuff to my team, because I, I understand that if they're burned out, they're not going to show up at work. They're not going to perform well. What do I do to take that first step to, first of all, gauge willingness, but then also get them on board and show that I'm not doing this for the company. Like I really am doing it for them as human beings. And that, that's the key, which you said, I'm doing it for them because this is not something for the company because you never know unless you try. Because think about it. You might have someone on your organization who not even thinking about stress or thinking about how the stress relieve it. So bringing it, just introducing it can be a big help and a major help. And then look how we, your team, and not saying that we all going to have good days all the time. No, but it also will be effective for when those bad days that come around and how we can pull together as a team. Again, like you said, burnout. As the profession that I do, we can get burnt out because we're in the constant of always helping someone all the time. So what do I do? You got to change your atmosphere. So just look at it as, hey, team, this is like a Friday. We're just going to come in and we're just going to have a team building day based around giving you some tools and some resources that can help you in stress moments. And this could actually help you at home with your family because nine times out of 10, Brandon, let's be for real. Sometimes we take that stuff from work home. And then how is that messing up your home life, right? <laughs> No, never. Come on. <laughs> that would never happen. <laughs> but seriously, you got to yeah. think about it. It's a whole trickle down effect because think about it. Your work family is who you with most more than you are with your regular family. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. And you got to, you have to help them as human beings. So it doesn't impact their lives because actually that's a fun way to look at this too, because if you're, employees are bringing home the stress from the day, the anxiety, and they're taking it out on their families, their families are going to hate your company. And they're going to not like when their spouse or, or parent are, are working at that company, and they're going to encourage them to move on. So it, it's a very holistic approach to both building the right culture, making sure you have optimized human beings, and then also making sure that their biggest cheerleaders are on board. Because right. Who they're with at home is going to directly influence how they feel about showing up for you and working for you in your company. And you can't you can't miss that stuff. I've seen so many times families, like external families, make good employees leave because they're not happy with how they show up when they get home after a long day. Exactly. Exactly. And that's why I say it's, it's important as a leader. You notice that. You notice that in your workplace. Look at your culture in your workplace. 
how are you defining? Are you giving out breaks? Are you saying, hey, let's, because I've seen it where I've introduced at one company, I introduced, let's take a, a 15 minute break. Just listen to some soothing music, put it over and over all throughout the whole work office. You know, some meditation music that can help. I seen the producer the, and the, one of the persons told me this has helped my team, you know, for us having that having that meditation break, you know, just listening to some soothing music, um, you know. Michelle, 15 minutes. You Who's going to pay for that? How are we going to afford this 15 minute break? <laughs> you know, it's going to cost you more yeah. for your people to be stressed out. And then you probably won't have somebody come back to work um, due to being out. Because, again, here's the theory, too. Most absences from work or illnesses are stress related. Mm -hmm. So as a leader, think about that. Are they really calling out sick because they're sick or is they call, are they calling out because they're stressed? Yeah, I mean, that's a that's a really painful question to ask sometimes. I So I'll say this. I, I haven't had a job in, I don't know, 15 years or something like that. I've, I've worked for myself for the longest time. But I look at my wife, who was in maybe one of these workplaces who could have used your help, we'll say. And it was always, it was a mental health day. Like, never sick, but always stress, anxiety, like bad culture, all this stuff. It's costing your company, depending on the size of your team, $1,000. It was. It really does. A lot of people don't realize that. Only read up on the statistics of it about most illnesses. Or here you go. If you have someone who you constantly beating, beating up to get these data, to get all this stuff done, you you know, you had those projects that keep you down to the last minute. Well, maybe going to the fax machine. I'll just use a name out there. Diane fell and slipped. Well, why did Diane fall and slip? Maybe because she's tired. She's stressed, anxiety. I got to get this done. I got to get this. I'm at, I got to beat this deadline. When do we just pause a little bit? Never. That's the culture we live in. That's the culture we live in. It's That's so the sad. culture we live in. And it's so sad. It's so sad. It's so sad. But that's why I'm here. To talk about these strategies. Thank God you are here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yes. telling you, check how many I I will say to to the leaders or those who are in the workplace, form formate, formulate a Zen room. Mm. Formulate a Zen room. I'm actually, I actually at my place of work, <laughs> we're actually working on a Zen room. I mean, I have I bring I have a meditation cushion that I use. The people can come into the office. I throw those frequency sounds on the vibration acoustic, and it can change. I have I work with the clients. I have them sit on it, so it, it just makes it a nice, relaxing culture. Because you know what, your heartbeat goes down very slow when you're relaxed. Yeah. Yeah, that's powerful. So I, I love these tips. I love all the different things you shared, but I'm curious, are, are there some other ones that are easy to do? I'm thinking, you know, that's really great for a physical workspace. I myself, I work virtually. So, I, I mean, you are looking at my office and I, I you're also looking at my house. So <laughs> how do we incorporate this for those of us working virtually? Um, or even if we have office space and or something like that, what are some more things we can do to promote our teams, our employees, and also ourselves from taking time and, and incorporating self-care into our workday, but making it intentional? So what I would say for those who you, you have a, you have a dual great job because you're working from home, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, we know that there's stipulations, you know, there may be the employer telling you to keep your camera on a little bit, but I do know you get a break. Just take 15 minutes, 10 minutes. Do some box breathing, you know, inhale, exhale. I, it's so easy. I can, I'm going to show you right now, Brandon, how it can be done. Just closing Living. your eyes. Breathe in. Five, four, three, two, one. Exhale. Just something simple like that. <laughs> 
I feel better. Let's end the episode. I feel so much better. <laughs> do, that in, do that in four or five cycles. You're pretty good. You're pretty good. It's it's amazing how quick that was one. We did that once. One. We edited out here. That was one time. And I feel a million times better. A little bit less energy, which I think is a good thing for me. I have a lot of caffeine throughout the day, but that's that's super powerful. Um, it, yeah, I mean, I don't I don't take breaks. I'll be the first one to admit it. It's not I'm not proud of it, but I I just always focus and I get in the flow and then I look up and it's 530. And I'm like, wow, where did that day go? And just that intentional pausing to reground yourself, whether it's before a meeting, before an interview like this, like I should do that before all of the podcast interviews, because it just, I feel so focused and grounded. So thank you for that little gift you just gave me and the listeners. So, and you know what else to do it at the end of your day, mm. do it at the end of the day, because you don't want all of that energy from hustle and bustle at the end of the day, just, and then when you close out, close out at the end of the day, just take a breathe and close your eyes. You see how, see how, see how my voice is. I can change my voice to the meditative. I mean, I'm a pro at it. I have some scripts, you know, I have, I, and I will, you know what, Brandon, I'm going to tell you to go to some of my scripts that I have. Um, they are on YouTube as well. Share it with um, us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'll, I'll put them so, in the show notes for those of you watching and listening. But yeah, tell, tell me so about yeah, it. Yeah, so I have one that you can go on. It's called Meditation Affirmation Garden. You can look up Michelle with two L's, um, B. Hammond. I have three series of guided meditations that you can use and listen to. I have one that you can talk about going into the woods and just focusing on that. Those type of things work. I've actually have, you know, tools, resource tools that I have. I use the ocean drums. I use the um, rain stick. I use the rain um, drum. So it's, it's, it's all exciting that I take as a tool to use. And if you don't have those type of tools, you can always just listen to some you know, you go to a spa music, spa music can help too as well. That's fantastic. And it, while you're on the topic, since you said those are on YouTube, I'm curious, could you share a little bit? You have a documentary that's also on YouTube that I, I really want the listeners to check out. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So the documentary is based upon for those who are leaders that call themselves who want to be world changers. So one of my professions is that I do advocacy for mental health because, again, I've done been through some traumas. I've collaborated with a couple other women, but we put on the documentary called Polish, Passionate and Poise, Memoir for a World Changer. We actually did one book, but we remade the book and did a documentary this past year where it's focusing on mental health and using the eight core things that you will need to get through. One is prayer. One is you say something. If you see it, say something if you know it's not wrong. And then just there's hope. So it's a very good documentary, especially for those who feel like there's no hope, which and we see a lot that's going on in the world today. But we come to tell our stories about the message, especially based around mental health, mental health, is something serious that we think that doesn't get enough attention like it should. It is now, but people really need to address it more. Well, it's interesting because, you know, I think mental health gets attention, but it's not until you've gone like crazy. There's, right. there is a preventative maintenance to do in the meantime. And that's really what this conversation is all about. So thank you for sharing all of your tips and tools and tricks and advice, everything Michelle just described will be in the show notes down below, wherever you are watching and listening. But what I really took from this, I think more than anything else was just the, the necessity to do it because, and I, I just felt it. You, you watched or listened to me feel it on camera as we were doing this. And that's something that I don't do. You said, do it at the end of your day to close out your day. I have noticed personally that, you know, I, I, I'm full of energy throughout the day, which also is masking my stress. Full disclosure. That's just, it is what it is. But at the end of the day, if I don't do that type of a practice for 
10 seconds, I'm kind of in that heightened state until I go to bed and I don't fall asleep all that well sometimes. So I'm, I'm stealing that tip. I will take that. If only that from this episode, it was worth a million dollars. So thank you, Michelle, for coming. Um, so and, no, thank you. This is, this has been phenomenal and a much, much needed conversation. So my last question for you is if someone wants to take that next step, they want to dive into self-care because they've heard everything we said. They know it's important. They know it's important for their team. They want to bring it to their workplace. What do we do first? What What is your first recommendation? Is it one of your books? Is it your documentary? How do we start this journey? So one of the things is, as I shared, there's books. Let's talk no stress that we have here. So one of the things is... Um, it's a guide to give you strategies. You know, like you said, I'm just going to just say you talk about you drink caffeine, right? Do you know that there's a certain time that you should shut down caffeine in the afternoon? So if you want to have a good quality of sleep, do you know what time that is? I, I stop at noon. I think it's around one or two, right? You're correct. Yes, yeah. yes. That is, you're correct. So if you really want to have a good fundamental, nice time of sleep, that should be that time where you cut off your caffeine. Also, did you know there are certain vitamins and stuff that you eat can build up your serotonin, dark leafy vegetables, different things like that. So what are you doing? Do you have scents? Now, I know a lot of people have aromatherapy, different things. Some people might have allergies to that, but different scents can actually boost your mood and also can also down give you a relaxation. There are different things such as apps that you can use, you know, mind, mind space, you know, different apps that you can use. So all of this is in the Let's Talk No Stress. It's a little guide that I have for different things, stress relief. Um, it also gives you the defendant that stress is just not in your body. It can be your environment, like your workplace. So mm -hmm. give you those tips. Um, it's just a whole lot to the game, but also... It also can challenge you. So you have some people that can be negative. You know, your words make your words can do a lot to you. Right. So one of the things is, if I can't do this, I can do this. It's not enough time in the day. I will prioritize my time in the day using those affirmations and stuff like that. So those are what's in the strategies in the book. Now, we know that we are habitual people. But we also know that habits can be broken. So another book that I have is called The 90 Day, which is a transition to change. Because, you know, a lot of people don't like change. But the theory is that in order for someone to really start to want to break on the habit, at least take them at least 90 days to do this. So when this happens, you'll have this for 90 days. You'll count your monthly wins your challenges, what goals did you apply, two, two life lessons you learned in the month, and then you, every month you'll have an assessment to do that says, during the month reflection, did I learn something new about myself? I practice at least one self-care. Um, during the month, I express creativity because we know that when you stress, you can't create. That is true. <laughs> when you're stressed, you know that, Brandon. You know that when you stress, you can't create. You can create. Yeah. That is all too true. And that hits a little too home for me. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> but seriously, thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing those two. We'll put those in the show notes too. There's a lot in the show notes. Are you, you better be looking down there if you're not already. Go down the show notes. Check out all of Michelle's stuff. Michelle, thank you so much for coming. It was a pleasure so welcome, to have you here. Brandon. Thank you so much. And for those of you watching, listening, wherever you are, make sure you subscribe. And in the comments, I want to know, what is the one thing? Just, just give me one. Don't get overwhelmed. What is the one thing you're going to do after listening to this episode? You know I am all about efficiency and less is more. Do the breathing. Take that little nugget. Go breathe for 10, 15, 30 seconds out of your day. Calm your nervous system down. You could do that at your desk, while you're walking, while you're driving, anywhere. And that'll change your life, I promise you. So thank you, Michelle, for sharing that. And we will see you next time on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Thanks for listening.